This is KGW News at Sunrise. If that is our level one, I would really like to know what our level three is. She's talking about Richard Gilmore. He's a serial rapist set to be released soon as a low-level sex offender. Coming up, we'll hear more from that victim. And President Biden will be in town today. This is his second time in Portland this year. What he plans to address during his visit and more on the support he's throwing behind Oregon Democrat Tina Kotek. Plus. Who do you think will win the game? The Beavs. You know, everybody we've talked to today said the same thing. Oh, they're saying it because it's true. They're the in Beavs, Corvallis. That's the, why they're well, <laughs> There's that too, Rod. I think the Beavs are going to win this weekend. So Rod on the road <laughs> takes us to Corvallis today, ahead of tomorrow's homecoming matchup against Washington State. The latest Rod on the road coming up at 5:15. <laughs> it was Look odd, at you. Yeah, everybody we talked to in Corvallis on campus uh, was a Beaver fan. Very uh, strange funny. how that strange. happened. Oh yeah. Funny. Oh my goodness. Happy Friday, my friend. Happy Friday. That's a fun story. We have that for you coming up at about uh, what 5:15. Well, or the so. anchor guy just said 5:15, so hopefully that's true. Uh, yeah. You think so? <laughs> all right. Um, hey, more of the same today, um, which is quite a story all in its own right. We have 40s and 50s out the door. Uh, generally, the east winds that kept a lot of you a little bit on the warmer side 24 hours ago have faded, but there are a few spots picking up just a bit of a breeze. There's silver's down 62, calm and 49 in Salem. To the bus stop we go. Yes, more sunshine. 50 on average here in town. 70 at noon, back up to around 80 degrees. The record today is 82. I'm forecasting 82. More on this uh, summer weather in October. Yeah, what a ride. All right, Rod, thank you. Talk soon. Our top story this morning, President Joe Biden will be in Portland tonight and tomorrow. It's part of a swing that includes stops in Colorado and California. No doubt this is a campaign stop. The White House says the president will also talk about how he plans to lower costs for Americans. Yeah, and this is the president's second trip in six months. This morning, our Devin Haskins has the rundown on what's planned. Good morning, Devin. Yeah, good morning. The president's team keeping a lot of details under wraps, but here's what we do know so far. He'll land here in Portland around 630 tonight, then heads straight to a grassroots campaign event for Oregon Democrats. That happens just after seven. After that, we're not sure, but he'll most likely head to his hotel for the night. One thing we do know, his appearance will have a direct impact on traffic. Yesterday afternoon, crews were setting up fences in downtown Portland around Southwest 6 and Taylor. His team won't say where he's staying, but a crew said these fences were for Biden's visit. One thing you can be for sure, take a look at this screen. TriMet says max red and blue lines through downtown. We'll see major delays as of 6 this morning through Saturday evening as will the max green, orange and yellow lines. Those start at noon today. Bus service will also see disruptions starting a little later though at 5 p.m. downtown and out at the airport when he's landing and taking off. You can always expect delays and disruptions out there too. Portland police, don't forget about the roads. They say roads and closure will see closures or major delays because of the visit. So why is Biden here? Well, it's to help the Democrat Party stay in control. Obviously, the tightly contested governor's race is Democratic candidate Tina Kotek and Republican candidate Christine Drazen in a near deadlock. He'll hold a reception event for Kotech on Saturday. The Willamette Week reporting that tickets to that reception cost upwards of $10,000 for a photo with the president. Then he'll give a speech about lowering costs for Americans. That's something he also talked about in California on Thursday. Americans are squeezed by the cost of living. It's been true for years and folks don't need to be a report to tell them they're being squeezed. Fighting this battle every day is the key reason why I ran for president of the United States. And new this morning, we've also learned the president will sign an executive order today directing the Department of Human Health and Human Services to lower prescription drug costs. Under this order, the HHS will have 90 days to come up with an outline on doing this. Biden is expected to take off for Delaware after being here in Portland today and tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Take off for Delaware sometime Saturday afternoon. Drew. All right, Devin, thanks for that uh, look ahead to the presidential visit today. Back here at home, Mayor Ted Wheeler expected to announce a plan to ban unsanctioned camping across the city and build sanctioned homeless camps. So according to the Willamette Week, this plan would create three camping areas in the city and these areas would be called campuses. Each campus would have capacity for 500 people and each one would be split up into four separate camps with a 125 person capacity. The city hasn't confirmed locations for these camps yet or where the funding to create them would come from. 
If enforced, though, the mayor's plan would end a policy that allows people to sleep on sidewalks. That was allowed and approved by the city back in 2016. There is a group of people with mobility issues suing the city right now over homeless camps on city sidewalks. In many cases, those tents are blocking access for people with mobility issues. New court records show that Multnomah County might be partially responsible. So back in 2021, the county handed out 6,500 tents and 27,000 tarps to the homeless. The lawyers behind the lawsuit argued that those tents are the very ones making it nearly impossible for people with mobility disabilities to get around safely. Which we think the county may have foreseen would find their way onto the sidewalks, which is the very reason my clients are suing the city. And so uh, it, it places us in an, in an awful situation where Multnomah County supplies the tents which the city sweeps. Uh, go figure. Mayor Ted Wheeler did respond to KGW through an email where he said he can't comment on pending litigation, but he says homelessness is his top priority and he understands the city's frustration. Meanwhile, the city attorney has asked for specific locations where ADA access is being blocked so they can clear those spots. Victims of a serial rapist set to be released from prison in December are pushing the state to change his sex offender status. As it stands now, Richard Gilmore, also known as the jogger rapist, will be classified as a low level sex offender. That means the state won't automatically notify neighbors if he moves in next door. Danielle Tudor was one of Gilmore's victims. He raped her in her Southeast Portland home back in 1979 when she was just 17 years old. She's one of nine victims Gilmore admits he attacked, but he was only convicted in one case because the statute of limitations ran out on the rest. Tudor says Gilmore getting out as a level one sex offender shows Oregon's system is broken. What makes me angry now is the fact that we think it's acceptable that he is a level one because he is not. He is a very vicious and brutal serial rapist. The executive director of the parole board expressed empathy for victims, but says the system in Oregon is widely used across the country. He also says Gilmore will be on post prison supervision until 2034. His release is coming up December 16th. Let's get you caught up on a few other headlines that we're tracking this morning. The Multnomah County Sheriff's Office arrested a 16 year old high school student in connection to a lunchtime shooting in Troutdale. Deputies say the teen fired shots Monday in Columbia Park. That's right next to Reynolds High. No one was hurt, but investigators say a bullet did hit a home. The Sheriff's Office is asking anyone with information or surveillance video to come forward. Meantime, the teen is currently at the County Juvenile Justice Center. And Kroger reportedly looking to buy Albertsons. CNBC reports we could get an announcement as early as today about it. Kroger owns stores nationally. That includes stores like Fred Meyer and QFC here in our area. Albertsons is made up of 20 brands, including Safeway. If the acquisition goes through, it would be one of the largest retail deals in recent years, but it could also draw the attention of antitrust regulators. And a quick weekend traffic alert for you. The Morrison Bridge will be closed starting at 10 tonight through 5 Monday morning. The county says crews will be painting the bridge and replacing steel beams. And those are some of your morning headlines. Hey, speaking of the Morrison Bridge, check out this video. I'm not sure what color they're going to paint the bridge, Christine, but they are lighting it up this month in pink. And that's in honor of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So there's also a little green and blue thrown at the bridge as well. Those two colors symbolize healing and spirituality. The Morrison Bridge is just one spot in Portland that's going pink this month. The Oregon Convention Center is another. Great cause, great message. Happy to yeah. spread the word and support that. You've got your red tie on I this do. morning. Is that a red alert for this crazy weather? I know why you're wearing the red tie. <laughs>
<laughs> you know, we have something called the great KGW Toy yes. Drive. Yes. Well, this is the time of year that we start the production to promote that. So we're all supposed to have some sort of holiday colors You've on. been today. ordered to wear red <laughs> I saw the email. I said, department. Rod, I know. wear a white shirt and a red tie. The man listens to orders. Yep. Well done. Thank you very much. I actually brought a candy cane tie I'm going to put on later today. Oh, mm. Ooh, very oh. festive, right? <laughs> all right. Um, yes, air quality may be up to the index numbers that's starting to bother some of you again. A lot of our air quality numbers up and down the valley from Vancouver down to Albany reported as moderate this morning. It's worse if you're going to be going up into Seattle. Uh, we'll talk more about that coming up uh, at 530, but we do have air quality alerts in effect at this time. All right. Well, boy, we're still doing it. We racked up another 80 degree day yesterday, so that makes nine so far this month. At this point, starting to shatter the old record of no more than six days in the month of October. We've had four record highs, including yesterday. Possible record high today, likely 80s and records through Sunday. Still averaging a whopping eight degrees above normal. In the climate world, anytime you get above three for an average of a month, you're really starting to get up there. I know the month's only halfway through, but we're at eight degrees above normal. All right, high and dry, everybody. So you go to, co uh, to the coast, out to Idaho, up to Seattle, you drive down to California, you're just gonna find clear skies today. Here are the uh, temperatures. Winds are generally light. Those east winds have picked up somewhat in the gorge yesterday morning have faded in most spots. It is clear at the coast, 45 there, 52 out at PDX. Freezing temperatures just about out in uh, Baker City at 33. So here we go, another day up into the 80s, which is likely for most of us, 82 in Salem. Portland made it to 84 yesterday, which was our record for the date. Today's record is 82, I'm forecasting 82, and also the same in Vancouver. There are those uh, north winds that'll be on the light side, five to 10. The one thing to watch over the weekend, by the way, there are some models that go as warm as 88 tomorrow. 86, I'm saying. East winds will pick up, so and they will be noticeable tomorrow. If you're out in East Multnomah County, maybe some gusts 25 miles per hour will be fairly consistent.